Hey guys, what's up? Zijin Cheng here, and this is the ASUS Zenfone 2, the very first smartphone with 4 gigs of RAM. ASUS is rocking the smartphone world with this release of the Zenfone 2, containing flagship level specs at half the price. If you've seen my previous videos, I typically review Chinese smartphones, and this is my first review on a name brand smartphone. So for some of the sections, I'll be talking about this phone from two perspectives. First comparing them to other name brand phones like Galaxy's and HTC's, and then comparing them to Chinese phones. Let's get started. While ASUS has advertised the Zenfone's 72% screen to body ratio very heavily, that doesn't make the phone small. It is roughly the same size as the OnePlus One and a whopping 1cm taller than the LG G3, which features the same screen size. It is also fairly thick at 10.9mm, but the curved back makes it feel thinner than it really is. The design of the Zenfone is simple yet attractive. The front of the phone is minimalist and the three capacitive buttons at the bottom of the screen look exactly like the capacitive buttons on the previous Zen phones. ASUS is doing something similar to LG, placing the volume button on the back of the phone where your index finger would usually rest. Whether you like the new location of the volume button will come down to preference. I personally like it on the side better. The power button is located on the top and is hard to reach for someone with smaller hands. In addition, the plastic back initially fooled me into thinking it was metal until I touched it. It looks very premium and feels slightly less so when you touch it. Removing the rear cover reveals the non-removable battery, a SIM slot, a micro SIM slot, and a micro SD card slot. I would call the Zenfone's build quality pretty good because the materials feel well made. However, because most people associate metal phones with higher quality, they might find this phone less high quality because of its plastic back. ASUS uses a 1080p panel on a 5.5 inch display that looks pretty slick. While 2K and 4K displays are all the rage nowadays, 1080p is still very respectable. Viewing angles are good, but the maximum brightness is quite dim at 400 nits, while other flagships' brightness levels are around 500 nits or even up to 600 nits like the iPhone 6. However, the Zenfone is still viewable in direct sunlight, which is very impressive for such low brightness. The Zenfone also comes with a splendid app, which allows you to adjust the color profile to your liking, with a few preset modes that mimic several other displays. ASUS also covered the display with Gorilla Glass 3, and it's pretty solid. Scratching it with knives and scissors don't leave a mark on the screen. All things considered, I found the screen quality very good, and I very much like the fact that colors can be changed, but brightness is somewhat of a letdown. The mono speaker in the rear pumps out adequate sound quality. However, output sounds cleaner and crisper than usual, but it is definitely no HTC One with boom sound, but it's still good enough. Volume-wise, the loudness is average. It's definitely not as loud as the OnePlus One or Note 4, but it's about as loud as the iPhone 6. Call quality and volume are also adequate. In conclusion, anything sound related on this phone is average or close to average. If you don't expect too much from it, you won't be disappointed. I typically put my devices through intensive battery tests and usually give a prediction before I begin. But I don't have any idea how efficient the new Z3560 processor is and how it will use a 3000 mAh battery, as this is the first phone to use Intel's new processor. I performed a web browsing test, reloading a web page constantly, and it took 8 hours and 4 minutes until the phone died. I then performed a video playback test, looping a video constantly, and it took 9 hours and 12 minutes until the phone died. However, does real life usage correlate to the battery life tests I just performed? Thankfully, they do. You will be able to get through a day of heavy usage with a screen on time of about 5 hours. For me personally, the phone was off with the charger for 16 hours to 3 hours of screen on time. It was mostly social media messaging, web browsing, and there was about 47% left at the end of the day. This is moderate usage, mind you. With heavy usage, I was up to 5.5 hours of screen on time that also included some gaming and some snapping of photos and videos, and there was about 2% left. Comparing these battery numbers to Chinese phones, these are amazing results. There are almost no Chinese phones that have better battery life than this. One of the few Chinese phones that get better battery life is the Meizu M1 Note. What about comparing the Zen phone to its better known competitors? Still pretty good, but not as great. Comparing the web browsing test results, the LG G3 gets 6.5 hours, the OnePlus One gets 9 hours and 45 minutes, while the Galaxy Note 4 gets 11.5 hours. The Zen phone's 8 hours is about middle of the road, not as bad as the G3, which has a 2K display, mind you, but nowhere close to the Galaxy Note 4. 
While I personally don't have a fast charger, there are reports that it can top up 50% in just 30 minutes. ASUS has created a solid showing in terms of battery life. While it isn't the best in the world, you will definitely be able to get through the day with heavy use. And if you typically use your phone lightly, you might even be able to get two days out of this phone. Basically, you won't have to worry about battery life unless you're one of those maniacs who plays Clash of Clans for 11 hours without stopping. Seriously, take a break. Have a KitKat. The Zenfone ships with Android 5.0 Lollipop with ASUS's own Zen UI over top of it, as well as a whole bunch of extra apps. Some useful, and some not so much. Apps like the Splendid app are welcome additions, but there is a fair amount of bloatware as well. Good thing there's lots of extra RAM to waste on those apps. Zen UI on top of Lollipop is fluid and feels smooth when being used, but lacks the raw speed and snappiness that KitKat gave you. While some people might hate custom skins on top of stock Android, Zen UI isn't that bad. It's not as bad as TouchWiz, but not as good as HTC Sense. It's more along the lines of Sony's Xperia UI or LG's UI. People don't hate them as much, but they aren't loved either. Of course, stock Android is still preferable over Zen UI. ASUS has also included smart gestures, a staple in Chinese smartphones nowadays and becoming more and more prevalent in the large majority of name brand phones. Smart gestures allow you to touch or draw on the screen while it is off to make the phone do certain things. For example, Writing a letter might launch an app, while double tapping on the screen will wake it up. This feature is almost essential in this phone because of how difficult it is to reach the power button for some people. Intense games ran extremely smooth on a 1080p screen due to the powerful PowerVR G6430 graphics strip and 4 gigs of RAM. There aren't any Android games right now that would max out 4 gigs of RAM, but switching between multiple games and intensive apps will, which is exactly what I did. The 4 gigs of RAM kept the phone running smoothly even while switching between intensive games and apps. This is not something an average person would do, so I wouldn't worry too much about masking out the capabilities of this phone just yet. However, if you are constantly switching between 5 or 6 intense games, either you are also testing the phone or there's something wrong with you. I ran multiple benchmarks to test the 64-bit capabilities of the new Intel chip paired with this 4 gigs of RAM. The Antu2 benchmark yielded a score of about 40,000. Velamo yielded a score of about 2,700. And Geekbench gave me a score of about 2,300. There are several versions of the Zenfone 2, all of which support different network bands, so make sure to buy the correct one that corresponds with your country. My Zenfone was the international version and it came with full quad band GSM and WCDMA support, and certain LTE bands as well. Unfortunately, the international version doesn't support LTE here in Canada. Just an FYI if you're a Canadian. Uh, go Leafs? Reception on this phone is the best I've seen out of Chinese phones. I get good reception in my basement, where my other phones either get no reception or a weak signal. Compared to Samsung and HTC phones, reception isn't the very best. It gets about the same reception as the HTC One M8 and the Galaxy S5. Because this phone doesn't support LTE, I only ran speed tests at 3G speeds and got 8 megabits down. Bluetooth and NFC are included in this phone and both work as expected. The GPS also works very well and never lost signal once while navigating to and from work. I am very happy with the general connectivity of this device in all aspects. As long as the carrier in your country supports this phone's bands, I have no doubt you will have no complaints. The camera is a major selling point for many people. Does the Zenfone's camera break this deal? Let's find out. Yeah guys, that little kid totally walked into my frame. I wasn't tracking him at all, guys. The 13 megapixel rear camera can be summed up in two words, not bad. Pictures are detailed, color reproduction is accurate, if not a little drab, and contrast is above average as well. Low light performance is also satisfactory, as graininess doesn't overtake the picture completely in these situations. However, when compared to the iPhone and Galaxy S6, it's almost impossible to take pictures that look as great as those two phones but they're still good enough for social media like Instagram and Facebook, and even for viewing on a big TV. Compared to North American smartphones, this phone is one of the most loaded phones you can get for the price, one of its few competitors being the OnePlus One. If you are looking for a cheaper smartphone option, you can't go too far wrong with this, and will instantly save you at least 300 bucks if you traditionally buy the newest Samsung or Apple flagship. The Zenfone gives users a good overall user experience, and 4 gigs of RAM and the 64-bit processor will future-proof this phone for a long, long time. How about comparing this to Chinese phones? It's pretty expensive for the price. 
you can get a similar phone with a similar user experience with slightly less beastly specs for less than $200, like the new Elephone P3000S. You might even be better off buying the 2GB version of the Zenfone, which is almost $100 cheaper. In conclusion, the Zenfone's build quality is solid. The screen is vivid, but quite dim. Battery life is not the best, but good enough, and so is the camera. Asus has kept the price down while managing to pack in some insane specs, making this one of the best value smartphones you can get if you traditionally pay $600 and up for a new smartphone. So what are your thoughts on the phone? Let me know in the comments below. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this review. If you like this and want more, hit the subscribe button below and check out the other videos that should be popping up now.